Okay, uh, in this uh, little video I'll just show you how we um, can import uh, the files. Uh, now for this sort of shape the easiest thing to do is just to create a 2D DXF shape uh, which is what I did from the iGIS file. I just used Rhino but you could easily produce uh, 2D DXF shapes uh, for this. Uh, I was able to read in the um, the iGIS file into our 3D import uh, module and I'll show you that afterwards but uh, this is the, uh, the easiest way to do it. Okay so we've got the uh, DXF file in here now uh, so what we need to do first of all is decide where our zero is going to be for machining so I'm looking at the plan view here so I'll make a guesstimate that it might be the bottom left hand corner so what I'll do there is I'll just create a point where those two lines cross and now I can use that point as my datum so that's set the local datum for machining and now I need to create the contours and patterns for machining so a contour is a shape in the XY plane and a pattern is a series of XY locations for drilling a hole. So if we have uh, a contour for the outside shape first of all, and yeah, be okay, and the depths, you obviously know the depths. Uh, so what this does is that it just uh, asks me to make a decision where the lines meet so when it's creating the contour here obviously there was a decision decision that could have stopped there and gone down this line or along that line so it asked me to uh, choose which direction okay so that's uh, created a contour for the outside shape now we'll create a contour for these inside lines and we'll make this a, a bit shallower i guess and it's not an enclosed shape so i need to give it an end point which will be there so that contour starts from the bottom and goes up and now I'll create another contour which is this line here and that's the end point and now I'll create a pattern of holes that's the first pattern and I'll give it a depth and I'm holding down the shift key to tell it that that's the last point in the pattern so once I've got the um, the contours and the patterns created in our CAD system then I can just save that drawing away I'll just call it alley plate and then we'll take that through into machining okay so the first thing is to set up the tool change position of where we want the machine to go in the XYZ plane a clearance plane here is a, is a height above any restrictions above any clamps and the feed change plane is a Z height at which the tool will swap from a rapid to a feed rate value so we'll need to define some tools so let's first of all def uh, define an end mill say 16 diameter and the length and the cut depth the cut depth is the maximum that this tool is able to cut if we have a cut depth of three millimeters and we try to cut an overall depth of more than that then it would split the Z movements into a series of Z levels so that it, none of them exceeded the three millimeters and the tool number here is the carousel position on the machine so that's the first tool and the next tool will be a drill which I think is eight millimeters and again give it a length and a cut depth so having defined the tools we could put those into a library so that once we've defined a set of tools then we can just automatically reload the library and uh, have it uh, accessible to us. So if I want to use one of those tools, so I do a tool change, call up the tool I want to use, first of all we'll do the drill and we set the spindle speed and the feed rate and then we need to tell it what we want to do, so we want to drill. So in the drilling cycle we have a standard drill and two types of pecking, uh, a single peck or a deep drill where it will go and retract the tool to above the surface to clear any swarf. So this is the depth of the holes, so I'm just cutting through the material and if I was to use a pecking cycle I'd set the number of pecks. Okay, so that just uh, drills those two holes. 
Now we could machine the slot in the centre, so we need to define, uh, select that tool, which would be the 16mm end mill. So probably the easiest way to do that is just to offset the tool from those two contours to clear out the area in between. So if I do a go around command on this contour here, and we'll offset the tool to the right, and we'll have an approach of a parallel approach of say uh, 10 millimeters and a parallel runoff of 10 millimeters and I'll have a finishing allowance of say 10 mil and you'll see why in a moment okay so that just takes that tool and machines up there now I could get it to do the same machining on this contour here but rather than fill out the dialog box again it's easiest if I just copy and paste and then simply change the contour and machining to that one Okay. now if those two tools don't overlap we'll see that when we come to simulate so obviously we need to move those across so if I was to set that to say 12mm and that one to 12mm now of course I could have used a bigger tool here ok so we can just uh, set this up so that it machines exactly what we want there we are uh, so that's uh, machined those two and now again I can copy and paste that one and set that to zero copy and paste that one and set the offset there to zero so that's machined out that the approach and runoff I put on earlier was an approach uh, distance and a runoff distance that the tool starts and ends uh, above uh, uh, past the material now I can adjust those sizes as I need to now I could use the same tool or a different tool to machine around the outside in this case I'll use the same tool but if I wanted to I could easily just define a new tool so we're going to machine around the outside of there so that's the contour that we want to machine and I'm going to offset to the left and this time my approach will be a nice arc approach movement and the runoff will be an arc runoff so that machines around there so that's looking at it with the tool envelope if we run that with the tool center line or if we animate that and run it we can see the tool here just in wireframe mode and if need be I can stop it retracting between those passes and that's the arc approach movement So having done that we could now uh, post process that and create the G codes for our target machine tool but before we do that we'll take it into the simulator and <coughs> we'll just use a standard vertical machining center and we'll set up the stock values stock material and it now loads the, uh, the simulated data so this is just viewing the uh, material and the tool path so it drills the two holes and then machines the slot in the center machines that right the way around the outside okay so that's just viewing the material and the tool if we need to or if we'd like to we could switch on the entire machine tool and see that moving at the same time so here if I reset the graphics ok 
okay and then in the access control here we can just open the doors and just zoom in a bit click more and then we can just run that as though it was on a proper machining center If we had any clamps or fixtures around this shape, then before we do the uh, machining around the outside, we could stop it so that it only went so far along, say these two side walls here, and then we could output a machine stop where you could reposition the clamps and then just machine those two parts that were covered by the clamps previously. Okay, so that's the uh, machining software as I say we can just post process that now uh, for a fairly standard control standard G code and then we open up a little window at the bottom here so that's the G code that we would send through to the machine tool as part of the system we've got a machine tool comms system here so if we have an RS-232 cable between the PC and the machine tool we can set up a configuration and we can send the file through to that. Okay so what I'll do now is I'll close that down and I'll just show you the machine simulator. Okay, uh, sorry the uh, I just import routine just so you can see that uh, we can import the files that uh, we sent through. Okay, so that's the file uh, that was sent through. Now we could just um, rotate that round so it's in the XY plane and then pass that through. Now the problem with doing that is that what you would then get is you'd get one contour which represented that top face there and then another contour that represented that face another contour that represented the bottom face uh, the, of the slot and then another contour which represented the the base so in this instance um, it's easier just to use a DXF file uh, and then we can control exactly what contours uh, we need because we create them in the CAD system but just to show you how it works I could just rotate that round okay and then we could just extract all the faces straight into the milling software and then we can set up where we want the zero position to be so that creates the uh, contours that we want and then we go directly into the machining software. So in here it's extracted all the contours for us um, automatically. Now in some instances depending on the complexity that's a useful feature uh, but for something as simple as this shape then the DXF route is the best method. Okay so that's uh, Partmaster. Okay, uh